This episode of PB. <laughs> this episode of Tech Weekly, not PB. Uh, I don't know uh -oh. what I was trying to say. <laughs> this episode of Tech Weekly is brought to you by Audible.com, the internet's largest and leading provider of digital audiobooks and audio content. For your free 30 day trial, your free audiobook today. AudiblePodcast.com slash PBCast TV. So I know a couple of you guys watch live and you get to see the raw version of what happens. You don't get to see the all edited nice uh, YouTube and PBCast TV version that goes on the website. And uh, one of the great things about that is you can watch our computer BSOD. Uh, and a BSOD. BSOD. Carlo Brown says he likes it raw. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's how I like it too. <laughs> uh, Make it raw, man. Yeah. So if you want to watch our spiel, that should be on Justin.tv for about seven days. We talked for like five or six minutes about what were we talking about? <laughs> cameras or CES. Yeah, CES. Cameras and anyway, how pretty we're much. Have an armada at CES. Yeah, next year, which is gonna be awesome. But anyway, I guess we can go ahead and get on with the show. <laughs> See, it won't be so deep now because we'll start the show, but, you know. Of course. Maybe that was that was the stream computer telling us that we it's should. Like, All right, guys, come on. Yeah. Come on. Exactly. Come on. Okay, fine. Yeah. So, Jep, um, there was a lot of tech news this week. Um, but one of the main things and one of the things that I'm extremely tired of talking about is the iPhone 4 coming to Verizon. Um which, of course, made news this week, and uh, Verizon, and I think Tim Cook, is that the the guy that's under Steve Jobs at Apple? Sorry, I'm not an Apple nut there. Wh whatever you want to call your app. What do you call an Apple? Um, app? You call them fanboys. Yeah, fan. <laughs> yeah. And then you call uh, people that are fans of Android, like Jacob and I, fan droids. I think that's what uh -huh. correct term. Get it? Yeah. Um, but anyway, so they came out with the iPhone 4 on Verizon. It's going to run the same 199 for the 16 gigabyte and the um, 32. Is it the 32? I think they they've discontinu they discontinued the 8 gig. And then the other one's going to be 299 on contract. One of the new things that uh, Verizon and Apple are touting is uh, Wi-Fi hotspot. Uh, so it, it turns your iPhone into a MiFi, which is kind of interesting because the the AT and T version does not do that as of now. Uh, and but uh, the new Verizon uh, phone is going to ship February tenth with the new version of or just an updated version of iOS. I think it's four dot three or something. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Um, AT and T is gonna get shafted. Yeah, exactly. But you know, I, I are, they, are they gonna have data restrictions like they do on AT and T? They're saying no. They're well, good because Verizon Wireless. That's the only way they're gonna get the whole entire clan to come over. Yeah, but, is uh, yeah, to not do that. Like that's stupid. Like offer an unlimited plan. I don't care if you're like, ah, hey, it's, it's using too much of our stuff. I might yeah. get bigger pipes and tubes and jump. That's what now we we have not confirmed that because uh, Verizon's oh, that's been the debate really because you know it's the same iPhone it's just CDMA a uh, chipset in there it's the new CDMA Qualcomm yeah chipset. which means you can't like yeah you can't talk and do data at the same time which was the problem with the Palm Trio or whatever that the like yeah. the, the real first which, smartphone that came could you out. even do that on AT and T with the iPhone anyways well. I mean, you know, hey. You can't, you could put it on, I think that was, a, that and the iPod were the only two applications, the phone and the iPod were the only two applications where you could, like, exit them and do something else. So, but I mean, who's going to actually, how long, I don't even spend that much, do you spend that much time on the phone where you're like, oh, let me just, uh, you know, since I'm having a well, phone. I mean, like, when I had, when I had Android on at and I did sometimes, just because it was there. Right. But, like, if I'm at home, my phone's on the Wi-Fi. And if I'm like talking to somebody, I'm like, hold on, let me, let me, let me blah, blah, blah. Uh, I guess you're right. You might need to, you know, if, like, if, like make... if, if you're like in the middle of texting somebody and then someone calls you, you're like, oh crap. Oh. So you're talking to them and then you're texting a person. Oh, too. see, I didn't think about that. The texting aspect <laughs> and everything. Or, or if you, Which uh, texting doesn't work at all. Like if you're on Wi-Fi, it doesn't matter. It's not going to send it. Yeah. But like you could go and like browse the web and joke, well, let me send you this picture. You know. And that's another okay. thing. Since they're going to build in the MiFi capabilities or whatever, assu like I'm assuming that when you get a phone call, and you know the MiFi, your iPhone's like sitting there in the middle of everybody, and you get a phone call, 
everybody's Wi-Fi is going to go out, or you know the the signal that they're <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be bad. You're going to be like, oh, hilarious. You're Hold gonna, on, guys, I'm getting a phone call. Yeah, exactly. You're going to be like, oh, sorry, new new Verizon iPhone. Yeah, it does the Wi-Fi, but uh, you know, getting a phone call, um, I got to take this one. But yeah, like, uh, I don't know. I think it might be, it might be okay. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's always good to have a different backer. Yeah. Honestly, I don't think that, um, honestly, if I was on 18, I, don't, I just said honestly like three times, but even honestly, 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 yeah, on, honestly, right, I'm honest with you today. Yeah. I mean, I'm just uh, honestly speaking here. Yeah. Um, if I was on AT&T, which I am, but I don't have an iPhone because I'm just not that kind of person. But anyway, uh, I would, I'm not sure I would switch because for one thing, Jeff, do you really think that we have that bad of AT&T coverage here? Uh, I mean. Where I drive, it was pretty bad. Yeah, I, I guess you. I mean, not like pretty bad, but like they're like we never drop any calls. Yeah, and I'm like, or like they say whatever they what do they say like the number one less yeah. drop call service out most there. most reliable or something. Most and I'm reliable. like, no, do you if you drive where I drive every day, True. you drop the AT and T call like all the time. I, like every single time I talk to my mom or something, I would drop a call, and I was like. Now, like Sprint, like you gotta do little tricks, and you learn the tricks that you gotta do in order not to drop the call. But I can make it all the way home without dropping a call. That's pretty good. So, like, like there's one spot right there at the Bass Pro Shop in Leeds. Like, if you just sit back in your car normal, you're gonna drop the call. Yeah. But if you lean forward, you don't drop the call. <laughs> I can see you like driving down the road, and like your yeah. your when face is like pressed spot, up I'm to like, the windshield. I'm like huddling the, the steering wheel. If someone crashed into me at that point, <laughs> I would probably die from the impact of the, uh, the the airbag there. But you did have phone service. Yes, but I was t- <laughs> talking to my mom. I could uh, get through there. But I think the really big problems, I think the most, which is where a lot of the iPhone market share is, especially eight, you know, in uh, San Francisco. And I don't think Los Angeles has the problems that San Francisco and um, New York have. But I think that's where you're going to see, like, the most people switching because they have the most problems with AT&T. Like, a lot of people say that in Southern California, if you, you cannot talk on the phone on AT&T. Like, you better just forget about talking on the phone. Like, you can browse, you know, you can use data all you want. But if you want to, like, make a phone call, you better get a Verizon or a Sprint phone or something. So, I have... Yeah. I don't know. I mean, especially if you're going to have to put, pay, like, a, an exit fee or whatever f- to end your contract... You're going to be going well, upwards. Sometimes uh, Verizon's nice enough to cover that. Well, I mean, I'm... Oh, like if from, they really want the people... Yeah, true. Yeah. From AT&T, they'll just pay it for you. Yeah, yeah they'll be like, yeah, we'll cover that. Yeah. Because we know you're going to be here with our, like, five-year contract or something. <laughs> our 10-year yeah. contract. Yeah. What? <laughs> you have to stay here for uh, 10 years if you yeah. want to get this iPhone. And then one other thing that a lot of people have brought up is... I'm not sure you want to buy the iPhone 4 right now because... If Apple goes by their release schedule, which they haven't, you know, missed a missed a summer since the iPhones came came out, they're probably gonna announce a new iPhone in about May or April, which means you're gonna have the iPhone four on a two year contract for about three months, or maybe four to five months, and then of course you're gonna be like, hey, that iPhone five over there, that's a really cool phone. Yeah. Oh man, the 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 iPhone X. <laughs> yeah, the what? iPhone. The iPhone X, what? It now does, uh, you know. Then they're going to start, they're going to leave it at X, and yeah. then they're going to start calling on animals. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, the live phone cheetah is out <laughs> now. Uh, they they start again from doing, uh, you know, Mac, they start at the OS X, <laughs> and then they just go back up, and they're like, ha, ha, ha. You, you've already bought Leopard, but now you don't have it on your phone, so now you have to buy it again. <laughs> oh, look, the new iPhone has the full OS X on it now. Yeah. What? You're, you're like what? I, what? Steve what? said I didn't what? want that oh last gosh, time. I can't get it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but anyway, I mean, it, it's good if you're on. Uh, it's good if you're on Verizon, and you've been wanting the iPhone. And I guess it is. It is nice to have your your choice on whatever phone. I think that's really going to be the key thing. Is essentially in a couple years, it's not going to matter what carrier you're on because they're all going to have about the same infrastructure you know i mean i guess you there will be some spots where hey you know aniston doesn't get any uh at&t service but you know so you pretty much have to have verizon or sprint or whatever but we'll see the cool thing with sprint is that they're in the boat with verizon oh so yeah they they're allowed to use verizon's towers 
roaming, but yeah. it's free roaming. That's good though. Does it so, does it roam with data and too? So you you pretty much yeah. Have... So I, I'm like when I'm when I'm at the depot in Aniston, I'm roaming the whole time. Yeah. There's not really ever a time I well. There's one part where I can go that I can get like regular Sprint 3G, but like I'm roaming the whole time, which it's still like you know fine. Yeah. You know it works. So. Yeah, and uh, you know, if you're on AT and T, and the only other GS or the only other major GSM is T-Mobile, so have fun. Uh, if if they were partnered, I don't think you would get much out of that. <laughs> but anyway, I, it is good to have choices. You know, um, I think that's also. I think a lot of people on Verizon kind of said, "Well, I'm tired of waiting for the iPhone because it's been what th- three and a half, four years almost that the iPhone was first announced." And you know, after day one that they made it exclusive with AT and T, we've been hearing that you know, on that third year or the second year that their contract ran up with AT and T, that they would be going out with Verizon. So yeah, and also um, when they go to Verizon, I think it works the other way too. Verizon uh, is able to use Sprint's towers. Without being charged oh, and junk. Cool. Yeah, so if you don't have... So, uh, you know, like, you got that. You also have Altel, I think, of CDMA. Um, yeah, that's which, in southern... I think that's, like, south of here, though, right? Which yeah, is, well, like, it's in, like, a lot of rural areas. Oh, yeah. Um, so, like, you know, they, they, they give some really good coverage there, so... It always works. And one of the only things that a lot of people thought was lacking, besides it's the iPhone 4, so I don't know why some people thought it was going to be like the iPhone 5 or something, but anyway, um, the only problem is it, it doesn't do 4G, which a lot of people are talking about, you know, Verizon's 4G. 4G is like all the rave. That was that was one of the bigger things at CES, right? Why do they call it the iPhone 4G then? Yeah, exactly. But uh um, hey, yeah, it just doesn't do four G, but we're just gonna still call yeah. it four G. The iPhone five G will do four G. Um it makes total <laughs> sense. That's what's gonna happen. They need to drop that G off the yeah. end of it, that's what they need to do. Yeah. Um but anyway, it's gonna <coughs> it's gonna do um a, a lot of people were saying Apple just pretty much said they're like, Well, we could it would make it bigger it would make the phone bigger if we had to do 4G and put LTE because we had to put another chipset in there. They're like, yeah, we couldn't do it. And pretty much Tim Cook goes on stage. He's like, you wanted the iPhone? Here it is. And everybody's like, wait, it's the same phone. And then they're like, yeah, but it's the iPhone on Verizon. It's revolutionary. <laughs> it's magical. You don't understand, guys. This is awesome. Yeah. And then they're like, well, does it do 4G? He's like, you don't want 4G right now. It's, it's not good enough. So you're going to be on 3G. <laughs> like, but wait a minute, my hometown, I have 4G coverage. Like, no. No, uh, you don't want it. You don't want it. Yeah, you don't want it. <laughs> you went to the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I clicked the wrong one. I'm sitting here looking at this uh, awesome thing that Carlos sent us. But anyway. <laughs> so, Jeff, I don't know. Have you used Daily Booth before? I like. We're going to talk some more about these photo applications. But Daily Booth has been around for about a year and a half. Um... It's what it does is you essentially the premise is you take a, a picture of yourself every day, um, and you just kind of you can they have an iPhone and Android app, and then you can also you know use your desktop and things, use your webcam, and Daily Booth is kind of cool because it has this um, thing that they call the live feed, and you can just sit there and it, it's free scrolling. You know what I'm you know what I'm talking about? It just scrolls whenever somebody updates, it comes up with a new uh, picture. Yeah. And it's pretty cool because you can just kind of sit there and watch people's, uh, watch whatever people are taking pictures of or whatever. Most of the time it's just people taking a picture of themselves and then they put some nice message at the bottom or something. But anyway, let me see if I can get logged into my account. I haven't used it in a while. Yeah, here we go. And th- they uh, they came out with a really nice new, uh, whoops, that's not the right account. Hold on. But anyway, they, they came out... While we're talking about this, they came out with version three, I think they're calling it, of their uh, their uh, web design here. And uh, so here's my account, or what used to be my. I don't use it that much anymore. So you know, you can just kind of take a picture of yourself. Like on this day, I was like, "Do you think my shirt's too bright?" Because I was using a, I had a neon colored shirt on or whatever. <laughs> and then you can uh, go on here and you can you know take a picture and follow other people. Like, here I have my headphones on, like the guy from Star Trek. (laughs) (laughs) And then you can come on here. This is really the interesting feature is, well, where is the live feed? I can't, I haven't been on here that much. Oh, yeah, here it is. 
So here's a bunch of people taking pictures of themselves, and it will auto update. See, as you can see, somebody just posted a new picture. So this da this guy's girls up on there. <laughs> yeah, there there's a lot oh, of girls. There's a guy. There. Yeah, he's eating cereal right now. But you know, you can come in here and browse cereal. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Share it with us. But anyway, you can like uh, <laughs> it has like commenting and things, and you. <laughs> it's pretty funny to watch some of these things pour in. But anyway. And you can comment on people's photos, but you can actually leave a photo on their photo. So it's kind of like uh, responding and to And they can photo your photo. Yeah. Photo your photo photo yeah, photo. Exactly. So uh, it's fun, and I, I really like it. It's a nice new design. I mean, it's, it's a lot of people have been talking about it. But anyway, it's, it's pretty fun. And um, if you're on Daily Booth, you're really going to benefit from it because it's got some new things. You know, you can simply come on here and come... And click booth or whatever, and they've got like a. Uh, I think they still use flash. Not quite sure, but anyway, of course my webcam is you know being used right now. So <laughs> we we love that feature of like all of the webcams. You know they're like, well, you can't do anything because it's being used. Uh, even though you want to use it, Jay was talking about that earlier um, with mini cam or whatever, trying to use his webcam and it didn't work. But anyway, that's some nice new features to. Uh, one of the largest photo sharing websites on the interwebs. Um. <coughs> so, Jack, we talked about uh, on PB at Night, this new g this guy, he became a, an internet celebrity overnight, which is one of, becoming one of the main things that happens on the internet. You know, these memes and everything, like you had Antoine Dodson, the bed intruder guy, and then now you have Ted Williams, which... He has a fame, you know, of course, that's a famous baseball player. But anyway, it's not the baseball player. It's uh, this guy, and he used to be in radio. He was in radio for, he went to school for radio, and he went to college, and he, you know, majored in communications, or not communications, like broadcast um, services. Voice announcer dude yeah. voices. Yeah, anyway, that's what he he majored in. And some, uh, he was on the streets in Cleveland, Ohio, and this some guy he he was holding a sign that said like I have a God-given talent I can sing not sing the golden it. voice yeah golden voice or something, and some guy whipped out his foot minnow or not I don't it, foot video or whatever he had just say flip video yeah his flip video it's or his his, term. his flip his flip just in case you didn't know yeah um <laughs> but anyway and he he uh, took a video it's of this like, guy and he became an internet so wait let me get that let me get that shot hold on hey. Say, say something for me. Yeah. And uh, he's become an internet celebrity, and now he's uh, helping out Kraft with their... He's actually... He was on a couple... Actually, I think his, his commercials are going to uh, run today. There's a, there's a bunch of basketball games coming on today, college basketball games that are well, like... I, I saw, uh, I saw the uh, Kraft Macaroni and Cheese commercial. Yeah, that's what, that's what we're talking about. I think they have... Um, I think they have like, started rolling them out. Yeah, it was the, it was the one that was like... Like, the dad did something, and then, like, the wife's all mad at him, and the kid's, like, talking about him. Yeah. Dad really messed up this time. And it's like, Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. Cheese, yeah. Ah, uh, the worm cheesy goodness of Kraft Macaroni yeah. and Cheese. You know when it's real, or something like that. Yeah. I thought that was a Wendy's commercial or something, but... He's, yeah, that is a Wendy's... You know when it's real <laughs> is a Wendy's commercial. <laughs> you know when it's real. <laughs> But what? anyway, he's got like this amazing voice, and if you want to learn more, that's that was really one of our focuses on PB at night. It was, it might have been last week. I don't, I don't, can't actually remember. What, I guess it was this week. But anyway, we showed the video and everything. But he's gonna start helping out with craft, like Jacob said. They've already started rolling out the, uh, uh, the commercials, and then they're also gonna have um, a Super Bowl commercial, or like you know, one of those. Oh, yeah. However many millions of dollars they roll out for those Super Bowl commercials, but he's gonna make a spotlight in their Fight for Hunger Super Bowl commercial, I think they're calling it. Um, which is Kraft basically. Macaroni and Cheese. Feeding everybody in the world <laughs> one noodle at a time. Yeah. You know but, what it's real. Anyway, it's it's kinda cool <laughs> to see see guys like that uh make it, you know, into I think he's also gonna announce a couple Cavaliers basketball games, which I don't know why you would be listening to a Cavaliers basketball game because they're horrible. But you know, uh, other other than Ted Williams being on there, I guess you could listen to it. But anyway, he gets up there and he's like, "It's like Cavaliers playing all day long. <laughs> they're you down know when it's real. Like uh, they lost a game the other night, like a hundred to like forty-seven or something. I mean, what are you doing? Just get off the floor or get somebody else." <laughs> Maybe this might uh, boost our, uh, <laughs> yeah. our our people that actually come to the show. Yeah. 
Hey, he's up in the booth. Maybe he's we'll in the get booth. Some, I can see him. Yeah, maybe Everybody can... stormed the booth. Maybe we'll get some of those internet guys to cover us or something. <laughs> At the Cavaliers show, they're giving away free macaroni and cheese. Yeah. Dude, that'd be awesome. Throwing it out. <laughs> I, I might go actually. Yeah. <laughs> if I, I was a free to... mac and cheese, man. Yeah. You know that the tickets are pretty cheap, too, considering that they're, they're probably going to win, like, ten games or something the uh, whole year. Uh, uh, but anyway, I, I kind of alluded that we were going to talk some more about this photo craze app sharing deal. Um yeah, I know that if if you follow some people on Twitter, you've probably noticed that a lot of people are using a, a new iPhone app called Instagram. It's been out for a couple months now. Yeah, I've seen it. What it is, it's like I know you use uh, what what is that uh, the it used to be not tweet, it used to be like Tweet Photo or something, but they changed the name of it. Pixel. Yeah, Pixel. Pixley. Yeah, Pixley or something. Pixel. Anyway, it's kind of like that, but it allows you to share photos over Twitter and Facebook. But it, but it, it's like one of those like uh, simulated camera junk yeah. things. It has um, it has like a, a lot like thirty different uh, filters and things that you can use inside of the application, and then Instagram has like their own little social network that you can follow people inside of the application. Like you can't access it on the internet, but you can use it on your phone, um, which is cool. Um, well, Pick Please, which is they, they launched on Android first, and they came out with an uh, an iPhone app later. They updated their Android and iPhone apps today, putting a lot of people are saying they're putting pressure on Instagram because now they have uh, geo tagging, so you can actually uh, tag like it. It automatic. Well, you can turn this on and off, but if you want it to, it can automatically share your location with that um, and kind of show a Google Map overlay. Also, they they have like 50, they have more filters than Instagram, but you know uh, what? I, I'm I'm planning on getting a, a Captivate semi soon, probably in the next month or two. Uh, which is an Android device, so I'll be able to try out Pick Please. Um, and then we can quick video each other. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> like, dude, I'm right here. And, hey, man, look, I'm, I'm not actually talking to you on the cell phone. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, yeah. videoing you or something. I don't know. Yeah, which we talked about was bought by Skype at CES. Did you see yeah, that? Yeah, I actually saw a guy uh, using it at um, on the bus, on the shuttle bus to CES. Okay, I'm right. not going to get off the stage. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But anyway, Jeff, this was something that we didn't really see coming this week. Uh, is Google is ending H.264 video playback um, support in their Chrome browser, and also they're going to end it. A lot of people are speculating they could phase it out on Android, but, you know, they don't have, like, that would take for, you know, it'd have to be in the next version of Android or whatever. They couldn't, that's one of the problems with Android is it's like, it's, it's not fragmented, but it's kind of fragmented because, you know, some companies, it, you have to wait till Sprint pushes you the update, and then some companies, it's over-the-air updates that they just push live, and they don't even check and see if they work or whatever. I think you ran into that one. No, you had a, you had your phone rooted or something, and then you tried to update it and, like, bricked it or something. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. But anyway, um, a lot of people, are, they, they're claiming that, you know, H.264 is, is not open source, and Google's saying we want to be as open as possible. We want to use open technologies. Which I'm all for, but the only problem is like HTML5 has kind of based its video playback on H.264. So if you're watching an HTML5 video on the internet, you're probably watching an H.264 stream. Partly that's partly because Apple pretty much bought the rights to it, and they allow, they kind of semi open sourced it, where they say, all right, you can use it, but you know there's still going to be a credit to us in the source code, and essentially we still own all the technologies or whatever. And Google doesn't seem to like that, so pretty much they're going to say, all right, everybody who uses Chrome, you're not using H.264 anymore. Um, and on, on a side note here with Chrome, I really, really, really tried to use it again. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to give you one more shot, Chrome. Don't let me down. Because my, my Firefox is being slow at jump, yeah. which then I ended up resetting the user defined settings and I guess somewhere I like added a setting that made it run real slow mm -hmm. and but um I was going using Chrome and it crashed on me again I'm like come on guys yeah, really I think they're they are gonna I, what the it crashes from especially on Windows on Ubuntu it, it's it seems to be sandboxed already so if the browser crashes you don't get the the Windows you know I cannot respond I'm just shutting down which is so stupid because 
honestly, Firefox crashes on me every once in a while when I'm watching a bunch of Flash video. It it won't crash all the way, but it'll say, "Hey, the Flash plugin has stopped working" or something, and then you can either refresh or open up a new tab or whatever, and it works. Which well, is see, like my 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 Firefox normally never crashes. It it um, just slows down, I guess, kind of. Well, it doesn't really. I don't know. Yeah. But like. I was like, I'm gonna give Chrome one more chance, yeah. and it, I liked it. It was, it was, you know, click it, done, go to it. I'm like, this is nice. I'm liking this. I got all my plugins that I u- normally use. It's fine, you know. I got the ad block on there and all that junk. Mm-hmm. And then it's like it goes to crash, and I'm like, I can't handle this. I gotta have a a browser that like stays on because you- I don't want to be in the middle of doing something and then it crashes. But oh well. And it, you think that they could fix that, because that seems to be an imminent problem on Windows. I mean, it, it crashes a lot, and I have I use it most of the time on Linux, so I don't have that problem near as much. So that's why I usually talk about Chrome being so awesome, because it doesn't crash on me on, on, on Linux. It's something to do with the port that they use to port it over to Windows Code or whatever, I guess. It, it's kind of like Wirecast. You know, Wirecast used to have that problem as well because it used to be a Mac app, and they, they ported it, and somewhere they had some code artifacts that they didn't completely take out correctly or something, and now it runs better. Uh, but anyway, hopefully they'll be able to get that out. I think, the, is it... Carlo, do you know, is it 8 or 9 or 7? I can't remember anyway. The new version of Chrome is going to be coming out soon, and it's going to have sandboxing for Flash. Uh, which should help their staying with the, the crashing issues on Windows, but you know I totally understand Jet what you're talking about because I've I've been luckily like WordPress in our in our uh, server thing it, it saves it, it does an auto save every couple minutes so I didn't lose that much stuff but if you're doing something that doesn't auto save or you're editing a, you know not editing a video but uploading some photos or uploading a video uh, that could be detrimental to what you're doing so yeah nine that's it. I knew I was somewhere around there. <clears throat> but anyway, um, and it's interesting to note because, you know, Mozilla, they're a, an open source, huge open source advocate. Um, and they actually don't ship with H.264 either. A lot of people were saying, hey, well, I can't live with H.264. I'm like, well, you know, if you have, if you use Firefox or, I guess, Chrome now, I'm sure that there'll be some plugin that you can use for Chrome, but you actually have to go and install something in Firefox to use H.264. It doesn't ship natively with it because, you know, it's not an open source technology. So they don't out of the box support it, but yet, you know, you could go get it or whatever. Um, That's probably how it will be on Chrome. So, I mean, if you're using Chrome and it works for you, you probably won't have to ditch it because, anyway, you could install a plugin or whatever. So, Jeff, did you ever have a MySpace account? I'm, I'm just going to have to ask this because... I had one at one time. I it was like back in the day when everybody was doing it, you know? Yeah. It was kind of like, like Facebook yeah, was and Facebook is now kind of like on a lower end deal. It's like a, a younger class. But anyway, I never had a... I, I kind of missed out on that. Like, I was on like the last... I remember like my... A bunch of my... A little... I have like a couple older cousins that are like... Just a couple years, like two years older than me, and they were big into MySpace. But I was like ten or eleven or nine or ten. I didn't really, you know, there wasn't any reason for me to have a MySpace, and I really wasn't interested in it. So I kind of missed out on having a MySpace account, and I never have made you didn't one. Miss anything? Yeah, I, the only the Trust only me. the only real feature that MySpace has is the uh, the music sharing for like bands and things. That's really the only reason I can see anybody using it now. But there's it's like, I mean, it's like. I, it's basically like one of those like free website deals is basically all it is and it's not really because it like I don't know people just make you know, those things so gaudy yeah. looking I'm like no yeah please don't well they they've been experimenting you know they've seen drastic down a huge downfall after Facebook hit their 5 million users and everything a lot of people have been migrating over to Facebook and not using MySpace the people who were using MySpace and then of course they're just to some people like me who just skipped using MySpace. But anyway, they're going to lay off 47%. They actually laid off 47% of their staff yesterday. And they're saying that uh, more than likely a, 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 a transaction, not a transaction, a, uh, a sale of their company or either somebody buying their technology or whatever is probably going to have to happen because, you know, they're, they're almost to the point where they're not making any revenue. They can't really support themselves you know, they don't have enough users to, you know, support themselves, I guess. And, uh, 
they're going to have to shut down pretty soon. But I, I, I'm sure somebody will buy them, you know, because they probably do have some social patents, I guess. Uh, yeah. Something worth salvaging, but I can see maybe... I mean, I guess Facebook could buy them, but I don't, I don't really know why that would make sense. Cause you know, they would just shut them down. Is all yeah, they do. <laughs> like buy right. them out and shut them down. Yeah, be like, hey, you, you three guys that are pretty good at coding, why don't y'all just come over here and like shade our guys for a little while? <laughs> but the rest of you guys, uh, what's a MySpace? Uh, anyway, uh, see you later. But anyway, forty-seven uh, percent of their staff laid off, and their CEO was not happy. Um. And the future for MySpace does not look very good, but I'm not sure how many people actually use MySpace anymore. So. Um, yeah, I, I, I kind of like to cover these Android app releases because we don't do a, a show that's focused on Android apps, but um, have you ever heard of a service called Vivo? Uh, yeah. They, they, do, they make a lot of YouTube. They put their videos on YouTube, but they actually have Vivo.com. And what it is is they, they release, like, um, music videos but the cool thing is, is you can still, you know, a lot of people try to put music videos on YouTube, but they're, of course, they're copyrighted. Yeah. Well, they uh, they have, like, uh, a partnership with Sony and uh, a bunch of other music companies where they're able to put the, the videos on YouTube and their website and things, which is great because, you know, I mean, they those those are some of the highest getting, or view getting videos on YouTube now. I mean, the Justin Bieber video has, like, 100 million views or something, and it's a... It's a Vivo video. Hey, and it's a good uh, channel to go to on YouTube if you want to rip their audio and get the <laughs> song. <I'm> just saying. <laughs> yeah, you can do it's that. always good quality. They normally don't put up, like, crap stuff. Yeah. Uh, well, their application is coming to Android for free, the Vivo application. So you'll have all of the music videos that you would like at your download. Or not at your download, but at your uh, fingertips for... Uh, <laughs> at your downloading. Uh, unfortunately, not at download because... But anyway... It, it's kind of cool. Um, but yeah. So, have you heard of this new thing called Quora? I have not joined yet. I know that, that sounds kind of odd because I usually, you know, even if I never use it like Daily Booth, I joined that like a year ago. But it's called Quora. And it's it's kind of like um, what I can best, how I can best describe it is it's kind of like, I can't even figure out how to spell it now. Yeah, here we go. It's kind of like um, what's it, what's it called? Uh, Form Spring or whatever. Form Spring or have you say it? Um, except it's not like teenage girls or you know, like <laughs> <laughs> whatever on there. And they're like, oh, ask me a question or something. It's more for people in the in the tech community, I guess. And uh, it's a question and answer community, and it's kind of like that. Except you, you, you know, it's more informative questions. And I mean, a lot of people are raving about it, and it's one, becoming one of the, uh, you know, highest growing social networks right now. You know, we're kind of in a one of those probably two to three, even four to five year periods where Facebook and Twitter kind of own, you know, the market share for social networking. And you know, you may have like these daily boosts and Quora and uh, Formspring come along, you know, maybe get some of the market share, but they're not going to have like you know they're not going to grow like this but it's cool and um you can look at all the collections of uh question and answers created you can actually if you have some you can edit them and organize them i think a lot of people are saying that this could be good for uh, businesses and things because you know instead of having to use your own you know having to manage your own infrastructure for answering questions about your product or whatever you could just go in core and like be like i'm on core right now you know, if you have any questions, hit us up or whatever. So, it's kind of interesting. I'm probably going to be joining it soon. Uh, you know, that way I can test it out and kind of give my opinion on it. But it's Q-U-O-R-A dot com. And uh, you can, well, I guess, that, I guess I could do it now. But you can sign up with Facebook Connect, which is good. You know, you can just click one button and you already have an account pretty much. They get all your information from Facebook, which is kind of weird. But uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, but... It looks kind of interesting, and um, I'll probably be checking it out pretty soon. And I think they hit, they hit a milestone this week of like I forget how many users they had, but anyway. Um, so we we t- we talk a lot about since since you've been very focused on the leaf, even though you still haven't been yeah. able to get it yet uh, because it well, hasn't. They say maybe by the end of summer. Maybe which hopefully. they also said by the end of the summer last year. 
And then they also said <laughs> by the end of December last year, too. Yeah, and they just keep pushing it. But hopefully it will actually be. Because, hey, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say, I got, the, I, I'm, I got reserved a black one. It yeah. looks really sweet, like in the pictures. Yeah, I'm just saying. Does. But not as sweet as, uh, well, I guess not as, I mean, it still looks pretty sweet. But this this next, uh, the, the Prius C that we're talking about here, yeah. it's going to be pretty sweet looking. If it's actually vaporware. Yeah, the only problem is, you know, it's it's not, these are still hybrids. They're not. Yeah, but, you know. Yeah. But sometimes they, you have to make a compromise yeah, somewhere. They still look cool, though. Yeah. Um, and they're going to have a lot of new technologies. I think a lot of um, the car companies, you know, Ford was really the first one to have kind of the semi-internet-connected um, car deal coming on. You know, they have, like, the, the My Ford Touch and the Ford Sync that they call it, and it can, like, read text messages to you. Well, one of the big things, this is one reason why uh, Mashable covered this, is because uh, Toyota's new new technologies for, you know, reading, all this different kind of stuff that you can do in the car is actually going to be on here. But these things look pretty sweet. Yeah. I'm going to have to... See, admit. like, the Prius C looks sweet. The Prius, uh, what is it, T or J or whatever it was? Is it V or something? V, v yeah. Prius V. I mean, that's basically like your, your original Prius. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit shorter, but, um... You know, it's a little bit more streamlined looking, but like that Prius C, that's I mean that's I like the back of that. That's, yeah, that's that is nice. cool. I like the back too. With a little hatchback design, but yeah. it's like cool looking with yeah. the like that bent uh, like window or whatever. Yeah. Which means it's probably plastic, but <laughs> still, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And the wheels look pretty sweet. Yeah, I do like the the rims. They, they got like a uh, like a it's apparently like a new design for the wheel that's like supposed to. Uh, completely reduce the drag of the wheel because of the those little vents on the side on the rim yeah it like tunnel basically tunnels the air through the tire so it doesn't like drag make a drag coefficient on the tire huh. that's pretty cool, cool. Yeah. we got some really neat technology that's gonna be in that one but like like i said that one's still concept yeah but and it looks really spacious like jacob said it is just yeah concept, i mean like that but... that i like how it's like kind of squashed down a little yeah um that's probably how they keep it. That's the Prius V there. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But it looks pretty cool, and they're going to have their new uh, internet connected, or internet enabled, I guess I could say, um, panel in the front there using their GPS and everything. Um, so that's going to be pretty interesting, and I, I just really included it because they look pretty cool, and it's, you know, new hybrid technologies and things, uh, which are always sweet. As I get a drink here and try not to spill all this water <laughs> everywhere, um, which would not be good. We would probably have uh, worse problems in a BSOD, I would have to admit. <laughs> oh, dude, speaking of spilling drinks, like, mm -hmm. there was a couple times where, like, people were handing drinks over my laptop to other people. That's like, not a good airplane, idea. Yeah. And I was like, I swear, if you spill that drink on my laptop, I'm suing Delta. Yeah. <laughs> For, like, <laughs> 600 300 bucks. 300 bucks, yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That was just yeah. okay. But anyway, dude, that's I, I hate this next one. I, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I, maybe it's just me. So the new the new Facebook profile design. Yeah, we talked about that earlier. They forced it on everybody. That is true. But this is this is kind of like an uh, this, something that kind of see my Apple. They're like, well, we yeah, let you. You haven't, you haven't actually clicked yet to uh, switch over to the new Facebook profile. So I'm just going to go ahead and make that for you. Now, see, what they did is they used to just do that. They just say, all right, here's the new Facebook profile. It's coming out on this day. You can't do anything about it. Well, about three, two or three months ago, I guess it was September or October, they actually kind of released it, not really in beta because it was done. But you could yeah, just, just had the little button up at the top. Yeah. It's like, hey, check it out. Well, now, I, I, guess you, I guess I figured this was coming, you know, I guess. But anyway, the new Facebook profile design is now live for everyone. Uh, without wanting it, it, it doesn't matter if you it, want it or it, what. You can't go back yeah. now. It, that's that's your profile. Yeah, and it's not that. It, it's, it just well, it like rearranges stuff in a weird spot. Like stuff yeah. I want people to see more. Like when I go to an info about somebody, I mean, you know, I don't really, I don't really care what what their favorite you know movie is. Sometimes, yeah. like when I when I think of info, I think about like actual info. Like here's. My what my email address? Here's my phone number if I have it on there. It doesn't even show the birthdays anymore. 
Yeah, I know. You have to like go up there and manually set it. Dig hard to find stuff about somebody. And then all those pictures at the top, I'm like, that's nice and all, but like, man, it's like you got to scroll down just to find something out about somebody. But see, it's tagged photos. That's the problem. Like, I could tag you in any photo I wanted, and it would show up right on the top of your feed or whatever, which is not. It showed none of your photos. It just shows the photos of you. Exactly. And that could be anything. Like, some people have tagged me in like some random thing that they just wanted me to see. I tagged you in this picture of this yeah. naked dude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And especially <laughs> now it's on your your wall. <laughs> yeah, and especially if you're trying to like uphold like a you know a good thing. If you're a business guy or something, and you you do a lot of things on Facebook or whatever. Yeah. You don't want that stuff up there, and you can. I'll have to admit, if you dig into the Facebook privacy settings, you can switch that to whatever like your photos or whatever. But I mean. 99%, 99.5% of all Facebook users have never been to the privacy settings, probably. So, you know, they probably clicked, oh, I only want some people to see it on the first day that they signed up. And then from now on, you know, they're Yeah, set. and what was the other thing they had was about, like, um, uh, instant share. Or so, I don't know what it was called. Something kind of sharing thing that you had to turn off by default if you don't want to do it. But, like, programs could, like, just type in your name, like oh. a website applet that yeah. you can, like put your username in, and or if the if your friend added it to one of their websites or something, basically it would show all of your stuff, even though like it was like a hole basically in the privacy. Yeah, like it would like allow people access into your stuff if they weren't your friend and jump. Yeah, I, which I mean I don't got nothing really to hide on Facebook. I don't yeah, have I like know. thirty like photo albums on there that only certain people can watch. Yeah. But, uh, it's like, you know, uh, uh, apparently some people use that as, like, their own, like, personal photo storage place or something. Yeah, I don't... That they don't want people to see their photos, even though you can. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's just, pretty much, if you if you care anything about privacy, don't yeah, join don't Facebook. don't put it on the internet. Yeah. I mean, come on. If, if you, if there's, like, if you don't want to see somebody, of, if you don't want the picture of you drunk yeah. on Facebook, if, if you don't yeah. want people to see you drunk, don't put it on Facebook, go, all right? Go through this uh, logical thinking before you upload yeah. a picture. If this picture were to ever get on the internet for everyone to see, would I regret it? Yeah. And then, if you say yes, don't upload it. <laughs> yeah. You know? I mean, I know they're... I'm going to start uploading, like, pictures of me, like, whatever... <laughs> Like to a private album that only I can see, and then somehow Facebook accidentally turned all that off one day. Wait, what? They all get posted to my wall, and I'm like, uh, yeah, about yeah. that wig. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I did not take pictures. Well, I take that back. I did take a couple pictures of myself in wigs, but that was for Shay, the Shay Tars. Yeah, the Shay Tars video, so it's all right. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay if you dress up like a girl in Shay Tars video. Yeah. <laughs> but if you just do it normally, it's it's weird. Yeah, it's, it's totally weird. No, yeah. but... <laughs> Which he still hasn't watched it yet. True. I, I don't know what he's doing, you know? We tweeted know. him like 50 times. Dude, he, on his, okay, I know this is cut off. But like on his, on his one of his videos, he went into his inbox because he was showing how he has to uh, add through, the videos. Yeah. And he, he normally does a video response to the previous video he had. And he goes, oh, look, my inbox has 105,000 pe- uh, messages. I'll get to those sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then the next day, like, it's... He said, the only inbox... The only time he goes in his inbox is to uh, um, uh, allow a video response that he does. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, that was off the topic. Sorry. So, yeah, uh, Foursquare. Yeah, we covered this earlier uh, <laughs> when it first came out, and we that was right after, you know, Jacob and I had started using Gowalla, which has always done photos. But anyway, um, and Foursquare introduced their new photo sharing. It's kind of, you know, you can go, say, if you went to Walmart or somewhere, you could take a picture of Walmart and then be like, hey, I'm at Walmart. Or, hey, look at my pictures. Yeah, or you can, um, you know, if you're eating somewhere, you could take a picture of what you're eating. It's it's an interesting idea, and Gowalla does it as well. So yeah. the top two major uh, check-in services now do it. But uh, they actually hit one million photos shared in three weeks. So if you think about it, how many how many million? I, I, think, I think there's like seven million people on... Foursquare, I think, and, you know, I mean, not all those people use it every day, but still, yeah. one million photos in three weeks, that's pretty good. It's a lot of photos. Yeah. It's a lot of data. Exactly. I mean, think about it, like, your standard photo for a phone is, like, what, like, half a meg? Yeah. Once it uploads? And a million? Jeez, that's... That's a lot of data. Yeah. It's just crazy that these, like, places that are non-profitable, like, 
Foursquare doesn't really make money off of anything. Yeah. You know, that they have the ability to buy storage to store all this stuff. Yeah. I, I or think... not, not Foursquare, but you know, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they got some service somewhere where they're like storing all these photos. Yeah. It's, so just, it's just crazy to me that all these places like Pixley and all that stuff, they're like, you don't got to pay anything. I guess they get ad revenue or, or something. I don't know. But, like, you know, it's all done via your phone. When are you ever going to go to the web and actually see? I don't know. Yeah. In Foursquare, the only thing I can think of, Foursquare doesn't have ads. The only thing that I can think of is, I think they, like, down here. It's got to be something with businesses or something. Yeah, it is. They have a. Uh, you, can, you can pay Foursquare if you're a business to be, like, special stuff yeah. pop up. Which is, I mean, a lot of people would probably pay that because now that you think about it, you know, it'd be great to get a, you can be like, instead of printing coupons out, we could actually just, you know, send them to people's phone when they check into McDonald's instead of, you know, giving people coupons that they'll never use that they have yeah, to clip I, out. I want people to get more into uh, accepting coupons on the phone. Like, a barcode pops up yeah, on the screen and they can scan that. that. I'm like, you know, you scanned it, it's logged that you scanned it, you don't need the coupon. Yeah. It's just, you know, get away from paper. You know, that's what I say. Yep, I, I hardly ever, my dad gets so, or actually my mom gets so mad because she prints off coupons all the time. And she yeah. comes in here sometimes and she's like, hey, you want to, can I use your printer or something? I'm like, my printer's been out of ink for two months. She's like, well, how do you print stuff? I'm like, <clears throat> I don't print stuff. If I want to read something, it goes on my iPad. I read it on my, you know, on my desktop or whatever. Yeah, and, or you just read it right there on the computer. Yeah, okay, I read it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's no reason for me to print out anything anymore, so. I'm kind of like Which you. I, do, I have recently bought a new wireless printer, but but that was mainly because I broke. needed a <laughs> uh, monochrome laser printer for like making circuit boards and junk. So, yeah. And different templates and junk. I mainly just use it for template stuff. I never really use it for anything else besides that. Yeah. It's a template printer. Yeah. <laughs> this these these hoax that go around. This is one of the problems with the internet. All right. People are so gullible. Uh, yeah, they're like, oh wait, Facebook shut down. No, uh, oh yeah, man, March no, 15th. my Facebook. I'm not gonna be able to play play yeah. Farmville anymore. Yeah. So Carlos sent me this link, and it it did look kind of credible because it was kind of a news site deal. I mean, you know, it was kind of fishy first off, but I mean, if it would have been on like TechCrunch or something, I would have probably believed it. Or not TechCrunch, more like Mashable, because I still don't believe everything that TechCrunch puts out. But you know, anyway, uh, that's another story for another day. But anyway, um. If it was a more credible site that would have taken this up, I may have considered it. But still, I mean, 500 million users. Facebook's at the highest point they've ever been at. Probably, well, a lot more than 500 million users. But anyway, um, call the post in the chat room. I, I did some investigating. I was like, well, you know, for one thing, Facebook's not going to shut down. But if they did shut down, who really cares? You know, I mean, I'll just go on Twitter. And if that's a problem, I'll there'll be some other, you know, new Facebook that's exactly like Facebook. But it's called, like, you know... Book face or something. <laughs> they would probably do that. They would probably face nook. Yeah, face nook. Oh look, we have we have. It's exactly like Facebook, but it's green or something. You know, yeah. whatever. <laughs> or it's got bookcases everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, Facebook is not shutting down everyone watching this video. It's not shutting down. I promise. Don't you can... worry about it. But they are gonna destroy all your data. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. They're not. <laughs> what? No. Well, as long as they don't destroy my farm, it'll be all right. If you do not cut, if you do not put this as your status. You will yeah. lose your Facebook account within five days. That's the best ones right there. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do it. No, I don't want to do it. Like, but why I are you doing this? Well, what if it's real? I'm like, it's not real. Why would they do that? Think. Yeah. I don't know. You know, no. people are just need to really, a, a, lot, a lot of people, like, I guess majority of the people that are on social networking websites, um, because like anybody in the brother can be up on there. It's not like just, yeah. before like, you know, getting up in like a forum, which was basically like your social networking website. You know, it was somebody that knew what they were talking about. Yeah. Like, you know, geek and like, you know, getting up in there. Now it's like anybody and their brother is up on the internet, like, you know, chatting and and vlogging and all that stuff. Yeah. And like, and I forget that sometimes. So I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot that. Yeah. But like, yeah, like you guys logically think things through before you're like, Oh, but it said if I didn't, if I didn't, if I didn't, 
uh, post this on my on my Facebook that my dad would die. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, dude. Okay, think about this. Okay. Oh no, I didn't post this. Now someone's gonna come to my house and kill my father. Why? <laughs> Why would they do that? <laughs> Wait a minute. What? What? No. But, um, but, but, but what if it came true? Yeah. Eh, just settle down, all right? You guys got to calm down with that junk. I'm tired of it. It was, you know, one thing that I could like, you know, make a rule in my e- my email to like filter that junk out. <laughs> now I gotta like see it on the internet all the yeah. time. I know yeah, what you mean. That was my rant for Facebook users. Yeah. Stop doing that junk, people. Yeah. What uh, you know, talking about Facebook, one of and we just alluded to Farmville, and uh, Farmville is made by Zynga, who has been on the acquiring blocks lately. Uh, they acquired the social browser Flock, which a lot of people, you know, that Flock has been Flock was like cool for like five seconds when it came oh, through somebody. Is, oh wait, never mind. Yeah, you're like, wait, oh that's cool. No wait, it's not Firefox, it's not Chrome, but it, it doesn't do what I want it to do. But hey, I can look at my Facebook feed on the side or whatever. I'm like, hey, sweet. Yeah. I could just done this as an add-on somewhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's that's really how Rock Melt and things. Rock Melt was a lot. It, in my opinion, was a lot better than Flock, but I still don't think it's ready. I think that you could still do it with, I think, you know, we're stuck with either Chrome or Firefox or IE. Or, you know. Well, like, there's like a Firefox, I don't, I don't, yeah. um, you know, like on some of those websites where like they have the drag this here to share it and jump. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. um, like there's an add on for Firefox that you can do the same thing, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. but like, you know, it's like, you know, two more clicks to like share it yeah. the other way. I'm like, eh, I don't really want that up on my, website the whole time so there's the view of the flock social browser <laughs> and uh, i mean just look at it it looks like something out of like yeah it looks like i a, got my, my rss <laughs> feeds i got my twitter feeds i got my facebook feeds yeah i don't even know what to look at anymore and i mean just look at those icons at the top there those are really really awesome you know they're, <laughs> they're nice and is rounded that no, that's not a tab that's your <laughs> menu bar <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i mean it's just crazy but anyway, Zynga purchased them for, I don't, the amount was, you know, I mean, I think this was something that just went through my Twitter feed, and I'm like, oh, look, it's Zynga, oh, look, Flock, okay, whatever. Yeah, look, yeah. I got it, oh, Wait, where'd it go? Oh, no, Twitter, it's gone. Uh, anyway, um, but, I mean, I don't, it's kind of odd to see them do that, but anyway. So, Jay, we, we talked about this on Gadget Gurus, uh, you had a, a bookmark, and if you were watching before the show, before we BSOD'd, uh, we had to uh, go back and kind of figure out what Jacob was talking about because we couldn't really remember <laughs> which one it was. But, uh, Jacob, it looks like you added two bookmarks on here that you want to talk about. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I uh, decided to add another one that I, I saw the other day. We need, here at uh, PBCast TV, we like to be on the cutting edge, yeah, cutting edge. Of, so, of any kind of social or anything like that that's going on. So, you know, hey, we got stuff going on. That's what I'm all about. So, Joe, you want to tell us about your two bookmarks that you uh, are sure. spotlighting this week? Okay. So, um, if anybody remembers from Gadget Gurus, uh, or I guess only Carlo would, because he was probably the only one that was watching it live, um, this wasn't actually in the actual show. Yeah. Uh, if you'd like to uh, skim through our video, I don't quote. Um, resellerratings.com. <laughs> okay. um, it's a pretty cool website. Um I don't use it as much as I normally do, but I normally don't buy very much stuff off the internet anymore. And if I do, it's normally th- from a reputable website already. Right. So I don't really have to check them out again. But, like, if you're trying to find the best deal on the internet, sometimes you go to some really shady-looking websites, okay? Um, like, eight times out of ten. I'm not going to say nine times, but eight times out of ten, if it's, like, really shady... I mean, you might be able to find on here, more than likely someone on the internet has already bought something from there and has posted their review on this website. So what you do is you just go over here and you type in the name of a store, say like, I don't know, Target or something, and you hit find stores, and um, and then you basically just like uh, hit find stores, it comes up and you can see see the reviews. Okay, so, um, um, basically they have .58 out of 10, uh, rating right now. <laughs> um, apparently a lot of people aren't satisfied with, uh, 
um, with Target at all. <laughs> um, now, this isn't just like a bashing website. People will come on here and actually post a good review, too. But, like, you know, they're like, uh, you know, just for example, like, use the coupon code to get some cheap lip gloss on December 6th. Got an email January 5th saying it would be delayed till February 24th. Cancel the order and we'll never shop there again. Uh, Target Online is an abomination. Lost in segmented orders. Incomplete uh, incomplete uh, shipping practices uh, or incompetent shipping practices. Uh, I just go through here. Ordered a bike for my child's Christmas present and received an email saying that it would be delivered by the 22nd. Got another email said it would be delivered on the 7th of February next year. <laughs> <laughs> this is unacceptable. I do not recommend Target to all. Uh, yeah. Cancel my Black Friday purchases. Not give me a decent explanation why it was canceled. It is slow over email responses. Um, but they do, I mean, considering that Target, I just randomly picked Target here. Um, some people do give them a little bit better ratings, but most of the time, uh, it's horrible. But, like, if you come over to the side here, uh, they have coupons for Target if you if you want to, like, go for them. I mean, they got, they got okay stuff. Yeah. But it's also a good way to finding, like, stuff. But Target doesn't participate in, like, monitoring feedback and stuff. So some, some merchants will actually... Um, respond to a review and say, well, we fixed this, blah, 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 blah. And, and then it makes the, like, sort of nullify the review, so. Um, but it's pretty cool. And then uh, you, you can see the, find the best prices around on the products. Um, that's basically um, their other website, which is, um, uh, it's it's still resellerratings.com, but they also have, they're the same people that do uh, delightit.com. Uh, D e a l i g h t e d dot com. Um, they they just basically like just have it on their website, but it works it really well because you know, you want to find a TV or something. You type in TV, and I want to find you know a uh, you know forty inch t you know forty to fifty inch TV uh, that's you know under. I want it, you know, LCD, okay? So you come in here and find one. Oh, there's one for uh, $488, so 42-inch by Vizio, okay? And then you go there, and when you go to the store, uh, it'll even tell you the ratings and stuff, so works out pretty good. Sweet. Um, and then the other link that I had, <laughs> okay, um... <laughs> Uh, some people are starting to use this now. I've, the first time I saw it was the only reason why I did see it was because um, the website Thinkiverse that I go oh, to geez. all the time, they've uh, started using it. What this is, it's uh, flatter.com, f l a t t r.com. It's uh, like a like a little like play on words with flat uh, or flatter and flat rate. Um, basically, what you do, say it goes one way or the other. Say you're the guy that wants to get the money. Okay, so you've made this product, you've, you've made this picture, you've uh, made this, like, album or music or whatever. And you basically, like, um, people sign up on Flatter. They put so much money a month into the Flatter account. And then they say, uh, how much do you want to use a month? Like, you can put, like, the means, which is, like, your total number of money. So once it all is used up, it's no longer being used. It's not not auto pulling stuff out of your bank account and stuff like that. So you put it in via like PayPal or something. And then every month it's all in like euros and junk. So you just got to do the conversion there. Um, but every month you can set the rate that it pulls out of your account. And what you do is like, like on Thingiverse, they have a little button that says flatter, uh, flatter this or something. And basically you, you're flattering the whole website. So like you go in there and click, and you want to flatter that, it, it does one little tick. So at the end of the month, however many ticks you have total, it takes like a piece of cake and slices it up into however many clicks you did and however much money you're doing per month and then gives that little bit to everybody. Huh. So it's like a, a way of like 
you know, thanking the people for their content what? type deal. So oh. if you only clicked, you know, Thingiverse for the whole month and only one time, they get all the money that you're doing for that month. Oh, that's um, cool. If you don't click anybody, which is, this is kind of cool, it, the money is used every month. If you don't click anybody the whole month, if you, like, didn't flatter anybody the whole month, it gets donated to some random charity. So, I mean, you know, you're willing to give, like, X number of dollars a month just for whatever cause. You can either give it to someone or you can, like, not give anything and it goes to charity. So it's kind of cool. Um, you can also submit things yourself, and if people flatter them, then you get money. So it's pretty cool. Cool. It's, like, still in beta. It's made over in, like, Switzerland or something The the developers are. <laughs> They got like a little video up on their website you can you can watch. It looks um, like you but can they use actually uh, have um, they 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 will also uh, list all the things that you um, want people to flatter. So like if I want to see like written text, if I want to see uh, you know images or yeah, audio, audio or software, yeah. you know you can go on there and see you know. Um, Whatever, and then you're like, "Oh, that was really cool." Here, I'll, I'll give you a a slice of my total month, you know, that I'm donating, and you can make it whatever you want. So it's like cutting edge stuff, um, you know. It, it's it's really safe because they don't do like the auto, um, uh, whatever you want to call it, the auto like, you know, draft from your bank account or something. You have to load it via like a like a, a, a secure uh, credit card or something or PayPal. If you do it with PayPal, they take a percentage, so you don't get all of it. So if you're wanting a certain amount of money, you got to go a little higher. Right. But, but it's basically like social micro payments. It's kind of cool. Huh. It's cool. I mean, and I think it looks like that they use uh, they have a bunch of plugins for like Blogger and WordPress oh, yeah, and like, stuff. They're, they're, they're sort of like. Um, Sort of like how PayPal does, like, the donate. Right. It's basically the same thing, but, like, you know, with this. Oh, it's like and a little then, widget or whatever. Type yeah, deal. you can go and click it. Like, if you go to, like, thingiverse.com, you can see how it's uh, uh, up in their top right corner of their website. And um, they have a flatter button. Like, yesterday it was 26, and today now it's 49. So, you know, it's kind of cool. Huh. That is cool. So you can kind of, you know, that that is that's an interesting idea because you know you just say, all right, I want to don't, you know, I want to give yeah, away. I, I appreciate you for your content. Right. Here's whatever slice at the end of the month that I'm going to give you. If I if I do a hundred flatters, then I get everybody gets a hundredth of whatever I'm doing per month. Huh. So. That's cool. Cool. It's like really small, 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 like chunk of change. But you know, if you get like. 500 small chunk of changes it can come out to you know a hefty amount of money all right that's awesome yeah all right so my um bookmark for this week it's an interesting site it's been around for about two or three years now and i go to it because you know there's a lot of sites like TechCrunch and and mashable and things and i'm gonna go there to get breaking news but then there's other blogs that i'll read later uh, for different reasons, you know, because I like their commentary, and I may not go there because they, they don't have the capabilities to break the news because they don't have, you know, a full-fledged news team or whatever. Um, so it'll it'll be posted a little bit later, but the cool thing is that you can get a different commentary from these people, and they'll add their own twist to it and things. And the website I'm talking about is teensintech.com, and it's, an, it's a very interesting uh, website, especially if you're a teenager because, you know, that's in the website name, but... Um, it's kind of cool because it's it's written all by people that are, you know, from the age of, you know, I mean, 14. There's a couple, most of them are like 16 to like 19, the writers are. And uh, they do a lot of different things. You, you know, they blog about mostly tech and they have some new things that they're going with like startups and other things. But it's kind of cool. Um, and they've got this new thing called the Incubator. And if you're starting, a lot of, it's really hard for, you know, teenagers to get, I know a lot of people are doing like startups and things and a teenager has some great ideas, but they can't get funding. 
So what they'll do is this is kind of like a social network for people to uh, come in here, and it's at incubator.teensandtag.com. And it's, it's kind of cool. I liked it. I kind of went over it. And a lot of the guys I follow on Twitter actually write for teensandtech.com. It's uh, founded by Daniel Brudolowski. I think that's how you say his name. Uh, but, yeah, it's a cool little website. They they do a bunch of blogs. You know, they gotta, they'll got do five, four or five posts a day most of the time if it's a big tech day. So it's an interesting website. Nice blog to follow if you're looking for some cool content. But, yeah teensandtech.com they've, they've got a lot of other properties as well I think they have a video game blog and some other things but yeah teensandtech.com so yeah <laughs> I think Jacob muted his microphone and he didn't unmute it <laughs> sweet oh yeah he was using his cough drop thing he was My cough, cough drop yeah. yeah Leo has one of those it's just a button and it like freezes the microphone for us you know it, it's an actual physical thing and it like stops the input of the microphone or whatever for yeah like, i just pressed the mute on my skype call yeah we're not that cool i guess not yet anyway <laughs> um whoa <laughs> i could probably do like a little mini button on my little controller uh wherever that ran off to one day yeah before we get done with the episode i was going to tell you one thing i'm sure you've heard of make magazine before right yeah Yes, there you go. The um, Make Magazine is um, coming out with a new episode. This or not a new episode, a new version. Or uh, let's try this again. They're coming out with a new issue this week, and it's all about Arduinos. So you might want to pick that up. I saw that today, and they're actually gonna. It's like they're gonna. It's gonna go. It's probably gonna be a little too elementary for you, but I might get it because you know it's starting. They're really going for people who have never used an Arduino before, who are just starting out. Yeah, they they used they used to actually do um, uh, like Arduino tutorials, but then they stopped because like the guys that was doing them like went on to um, do the MakerBot stuff. So. Oh, really? Yeah. But anyway, I saw that um, on a website. I just thought it would be kind of interesting to spotlight Yay! since we like Arduinos. So yeah. I guess that pretty much does it for this episode of Tech Weekly. As always, you can follow Jacob on Twitter. I just went off his video feed for some reason. Twitter.com slash freaking huge. F-R-E-A-K-I-N-H-U-G-E. Follow me on Twitter. Twitter.com slash Jones. Uh, the best way to keep up with this and figure out when we go live is at Twitter.com slash TV. And also you can check out all of our videos at YouTube.com slash TV. And also, as a little side note, now this might not stand very long, but I'm gonna try it. Yes. It all depends on how work goes, because technically we're not supposed to really record stuff at work. Shh. But as long as you don't show stuff, it's okay. Right. Um, I'm gonna try to start a vlog. Right now, it's gonna be. I'm gonna try to do it every day. They're not gonna be 15 minute long vlogs, but uh, YouTube.com/slash freaking huge. Um, get up in there. Yep. Subscribe. Subscribe. Whatever. Like every video, you know. Yeah. Um, whatever you want to do there. And uh, I did my first vlog the other night, so it, it is okay. I mean, my life isn't that like intriguing where you're like, oh, dude, that was awesome. Uh, you have funny kids because I don't have kids. I don't have a wife. I don't have a girlfriend. But uh, you know, it's just me, uh, basically eating. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, pretty funny. Yeah, um, it was awesome. I liked it. Yeah. And uh may And I like how YouTube uh like like I was going to accidentally um or I was well, not I wasn't going to accidentally. Um I accidentally uploaded the video out of Windows Media Movie, Movie Maker um in like 4x3 and YouTube automatically like chopped it down to 16 by 9 which was pretty nice of huh. it. Yeah, that is good. It saw the black borders around so it chopped it down for me. And Jacob, Jacob did do it in 720p with his uh, new Flip Ultra HD, which we will be uh, reviewing on Gadget Gurus on Monday. Which probably could have been in slightly higher resolution if I would have done it in 16 by 9 because you lose that. Yeah. <coughs> I don't know. I was I was going to re-upload it again, but every time I would do it, I was like, eh, I don't know. It looks right. Yeah. I think the audio gets out of sync, though. I don't oh. know what that's about. Anyway, it was fun. 
Yeah. Freaking huge life. Uh, yeah. Episode one came out yesterday. Episode two, hopefully episode one. today. Maybe uh, episode two by the end of the day. I don't yeah. know. No, no. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Dates on like he had a big I took the dates off because uh, I don't know if uh, <laughs> I'm gonna do them like every day. Well, even if you don't, it's still fun. You know, you could just it'd just be fun to have it now that you have the Ultra HD. It's probably yeah, it's a lot so easier. easy, dude. Yeah. Like literally, like I plug my flip into the USB port, import them into the live gallery, and select all the pit the, all the videos and say um, uh, send to uh, Windows Movie Maker, and then like. Make sure it looks halfway okay, and then hit upload to YouTube. Yeah, that's awesome. And then, like, go and edit a little, you know, type description or something, and I'm done. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, it's, it's, I'm not trying to make it complicated. Yeah, and that'll probably be the real key if you start doing them every day, because, you know, you, you don't want to be sitting there all, you know, for three yeah. hours when you get uh, home. I just got home, and me spend three hours editing my vlog. It's yeah. only six minutes long. Yeah. You know. But it's still plug and play. That's one of the cool things. I guess we can save yeah. that for Gadget Coors. But anyhow, until next time, guys, I'm Nick Jones. I'm Jacob Roberts. And it's been another episode of Tech Weekly. Guess we'll see you on Monday, guys. See ya. Peace.